Okay, the first order of business to understanding how to use the slide rule is understanding logarithms. We have the two functions, y equals 10 to the x and y equals e to the x. The reason we like to use 10 as a base is for ease of calculation. Back in the old days, we used to use logarithms in order to speed up calculations with multiplications and exponents, and being able to use base 10 made it a lot easier than using something like base e. However, base 10 doesn't show up in reality very often, whereas something like base e does. Anytime you solve a differential equation involving a proportion or in a lot of calculus problems, any kind of mathematical modeling, uh, e pops up all the time. So just in case any of you don't understand what the number e is, I'm going to assume most of you do if you're watching this video, but just to be as complete as possible, I'll give a quick explanation of it. E is what we call a transcendental number, and by that we mean it is not a whole number. It is not a fraction. Uh, fractions are what we call rational numbers. E is an irrational number. And it is also not a solution to any non-trivial polynomial with integer coefficients. And rather than just say that whole sentence, it's much easier to call it a transcendental number. Okay, if we're going to evaluate E, let's assume we don't have a lot of calculus behind us, uh, we can use this expression 1 plus 1 over n to the n. Well, for small n, you get somewhat of an approximation, but the larger you let n get, the closer of an approximation you get. So if we evaluate this at n equals 2, we get that. How about if we let n equal 20? Oops, put that back up in the exponent here. Uh, let's add on a couple more zeros here. Okay, 2.71. Two more zeros. 2.7182. Seven. Well, the 7 is a little bit off, but not by very much. If we go down here and evaluate it to 55 places, we, say, we see that it matches up to this 8 right over here, right? And this number is a 7. And if you know calculus, you can say that E is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n. All we mean is that as we let n get very large, n approaches infinity, this number is going to get closer and closer to e. Once it gets to infinity, it's equal to e. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot this function, e to the x, so you can see just what it looks like. And there it is. Now the thing that's so special about this function is that if we look at the function at any given point, we look at the slope of the tangent line at that point, the slope of the tangent line is given by e to the x. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take the point x equals 2. If you let x equal 2, then the y value is e squared. And at the point x equals 2, y equals e squared, the slope is e squared. It's very important. Okay, inverse function properties. Let's go over them. I'll close this down. We have our two functions, y equals 10 to the x and y equals e to the x. Right? If we're going to do any sort of algebraic operations on them, it's good to have an inverse function. What do I mean by that? Well, take for example, you have an algebraic expression, and in that expression you're trying to solve for some variable, and that variable has a multiplier up front. What do you do? You divide by the multiplier in order to get rid of it, right? Division is the inverse operation to multiplication. So if you're going to solve an algebraic expression for some variable, it's good to have inverse functions available in order to do that. So the inverse function to exponential is what we call a log function. So if you take 10 to the x and you plug it into its inverse function, you get back the argument x. 
Likewise, if you take e to the x and plug it into log base c or a natural logarithm, you get back the argument x. Also, if you do it the other way around, if you first take the logarithm and then put it up in the exponent, again, you're going to get back the argument x. So you could view these things as sort of canceling, canceling each other out. Uh, and we'll use that. And one thing about inverse functions, if you studied algebra before, I assume you have, is that they are reflections of each other. They get reflected over the line y equals x. So I'm going to go ahead and plot the three graphs, e to the x, y equals x, and y equals natural log of x. And they should be mirror images of each other. And indeed they are. Here is e to the x in red. The green line is y equals x. And the yellow over here is natural log, natural log of x. Okay, so once we start dealing with logarithms, we have certain properties that arise. The most important property, especially for being able to use a slide rule, this is kind of what makes the slide rule tick, is this property right over here. The sum of the logs is equal to the log of the product. In order to see this, we can go ahead and perform a little bit of algebra on it. We go ahead and exponentiate both sides. We'll put both sides up in the exponent. All right? And then we have the law of exponents. All right? If you have two things that are multiplied together with the same base and different exponents, what you can do is combine them and just add the exponents. Well, I went in reverse here. All right? I'm trying to simplify this. And once we have it in this form right over here, we can go cancel, cancel, cancel. And we have that AB is indeed equal to AB. Uh, sort of the same argument can be made for another property like this, where if you take the natural log of some number raised to an exponent, it's the same as first taking the natural log of that number and then just multiplying by the exponent after you take the logarithm. 